In this set of videos, we're going to be talking about a CRUD app in uh, ASP.NET. And uh, a CRUD app in the world of programming is different than CRUD in the rest of the world, right? Um, there, there just is this need for a standard app where over and over again, companies need something where they can go enter information in or create, right? That they can go pull that information out or read it in a list of what's been entered. That they can update those entries and delete those entries. And so CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. And it is just a very common, what I would refer to as kind of the bread and butter um, kind of app that um, just everybody seems to, to need the functionality. And so anyway, this set of videos is going to focus on the CRA in CRUD. So we're going to work on creating records, which we've already done. We're, we're, we're at a point where we can enter records into the database, um, but then also to read those records and, and print them out in a list. And so uh, we'll look at, at, at uh, those things in this set of videos. And so what I'm going to do first is to pull up the app that we've been working on, Date Me, my new money maker. And so I'm going to open Visual Studio. I'm going to pull up our little Date Me app that we've written. And uh, just to recap what we've done there, we built a little splash screen, a, a landing page for the user to get to um, that has some information. And then they can click on a button to go fill out an application to go on a date with us. And um, we were storing that information in this form. So we have this uh, in the views. We have a, a dating application form. And then we learned, oh, should I turn on Windows Backup? No thanks. I like living life dangerously. Um, always helpful when that pops up in the middle of a video. Um, so we built this little form, but then more importantly, because you've built forms before, we, we built a model in this application CS, which, which uh, matched the information in this form. And then we um, tied those two together by using this ASP4 um, attribute on the label tag and on the input tag and now this information is tied to the first name field in the application model and that doesn't mean all of the application models for a particular first name that they enter it means an instance of an application model that ends up being a row in our database and so we, we, we tied these two together in the models. And then the focus of the, the next set of videos was to go in and actually put that into a database. And so we talked about going in and, and uh, getting the packages that we needed to by going to our NuGet package manager and downloading those entity framework packages that were going to assist us in building that database. We, we went into our app settings.json file and built a connection string so that the program knows how to connect to the, the database. We went and built a context file, which is our liaison. I just I think I just like saying that word. Liaison. Is that even right? I'm gonna be embarrassed. I think there's an I in there. I think it's like this. Liaison. Liaison. Okay, let's look it up. Lia so that's not right. It's it's like that I think. L-I-A-I, -I. oh, I was way off, S-O-N. I knew it didn't look right. L-I-A-I, -I. S-O-N. Now you know. So liaison, that still doesn't look right, but we're going with it. Liaison uh, to uh, from the app to the database. So this is the thing, and you'll see, we'll add more into this file. And one of the things that we didn't go over, but you can go in here and, and tell it to um, seed the database with specific data. And maybe if we get a chance, we'll do that in this set of videos. But, but uh, we, can, we can make certain calls and we can make decisions here. We can even make um, specific, as we did in database, um, uh, views in database that are already making decisions on pulling information so that we just refer to the view here. And so this file will get bulked up a little bit as we do things. It may seem pretty simple for now, but the main thing that this is doing is, first of all, it's inheriting from the overall DB context file, which is gonna have a bunch of functionality just by virtue of inheriting from that. And then in the constructor, we're loading up the options 
we inherit from the base options, but we are loading up our own options, which include our last little step there was going to our program CS file and loading up that DB context. And one of the options we were sending it was to go out to our connection string and load up the database using SQLite. And after we did all that, we pulled up the terminal, we ran a, a migration um, to tell us how the data was going to be translated to a database. And then we, we ran um, our, our little commands there. So the, the couple commands we ran are uh, .NET EF migrations add, and then we gave it a name, initial or whatever it was. And then we ran our uh, .NET EF database update command, which then took the information and updated our database. And so that's where we're sitting. And now, oh, and we added one other thing that's kind of important here. Let me control, let me close all this, uh, save, and then open our uh, controller. So in the controller, we did one last thing right at the end of the video, it was kind of rushed, but we just made it so when the user entered something, we built a post method and the post method is going to take as input an instance of an application that we're going to refer to as response. And this could be, again, by the way, one of the cool things in, in uh, working in Visual Studio like this, if I double click on this and change this and I say rename instead of typing it. So if I just change the name, blah, whoops, re-blah, re -blah, ponce. If I just say blah, then it's going to give me a bunch of errors and it's not going to, you know, work in the program. If I will use the rename function, so I say rename, if I say blah, it changes it everywhere that it's used. And so, uh, very handy. So keep that in mind. Um, but th the point is, I'm getting an instance of the application when the user presses submit on the dating application page. And because on the dating application page, I chose to use the post method, then it's going to, when this page is, when this button's pushed on this page, it's going to call the post method for the dating application action, not the get method, which is the one we go to when we first access it, but the post method of the dating application. And it's going to have as its model associated with it, because we, we said that up here, the model is an application, then one of these instances of an application application is going to come spitting out called blah, and we're going to receive it in our little uh, action here. And I'm taking that application and adding it, adding the application that came in to our context file. And our context file, remember, is our liaison to the database. And so it's going to send that change to the database, which it, as it turns out doesn't actually save it. It just sends it. And then once I feel good about that change, then I can call a save changes, which will actually make it permanent in the database, put that record in. And then once I'm done, I built a second view now called confirmation. And uh, it's actually a third view, the third view confirmation, and I'm passing to the confirmation that blah object that was entered. And so now on the confirmation page, and this is the part that was kind of quick at the end there, um, I say, well, the model we're using is an application. And so it's going to receive that in now. And I just have that object sitting there waiting for me to use. And so we used it in a couple of different ways. One was we just straight up called first name out of it so that we could print out their name and say, thank you. And their actual name period. Um, so that was one thing we did. But then the other thing we did is we used that information that was coming in to make a decision. If the creeper stalker was false, then yeah, we're going to take your application. But if it's not false, if it's true, then we're not going to take their application. We're going to pass them along and we're going to spell relationship correctly. And uh, anyway, I was just thinking I can't even, you know, spell relationship right. It's no wonder it took me forever to get married. But um but I can, I can spell situationship and that's what counts. So anyway, so that's a recap of what we did. And now we're gonna continue on and actually implement CRUD functionality into our app. Spencer out.